The first thing you should know about my friend Mrs. Philholm is that she's multifaceted, like everyone is. Different people see her through different lenses. At the risk of sounding like an engraving on a tombstone, Mrs. Philholm is a mother, a daughter, a sister, a cousin, a friend, a co-worker, a co-host, an author, a teacher, a voiceover talent, an actor, a comedian, a potter, an illustrator, a painter, a homeowner, a hustler, a celebrity, a fangirl, and many other things. She's a lot of things to a lot of people. The next thing you should know is that the list I've just read are only the ways in which I know Mrs. Philholm. I'm sure there are thousands of other roles that make Mrs. Philholm who she is to someone else, and these roles are always changing. The great thing about Mrs. Philholm, and about all of us, is that it's impossible for anyone to know everything about us. We are a lot of things to a lot of people, and that's how it's supposed to be. You're rolling so deep. What do you mean? How philosophical at the end. <laughs> well, you gave me you gave me some Buddhist koans again to think about. <laughs> the first thing you should know about my friend Andrew is that he's mean to me. Almost every week, he writes a cold open for this show that points out some foible of my personality. He appears to hate the comedy I've been working on so religiously for this past year or so, to the point that he spent well over two hours at a public performance with his back to me, like something out of a performer's actual nightmare. Just last week, he threatened to keep me off his wedding invite list if I didn't stop talking about the very normal functions of the human body. The next thing you should know about Andrew is that he's nice to me. He picked up the dead mouse without me even asking. He's acted as counselor confessor to my children and to me, of course, for years. And he has willingly helped me fix every tech problem I've ever had. And also just last week, he edited the show and wrote the show notes before I even knew it. Mean and nice, nice and mean. He's a riddle wrapped in a conundrum, our Andrew. Welcome to Half My Age, a weekly show in which a 25-year-old adult and a 50-year-old child help each other make sense of the world. It's kind of similar. We got a lot of things to talk about, Phil Holm. You gave me uh, you gave me a list of seven, which I assume was intentional. I assume because seven is the Lord's number, they say. Nope. But then I gave you eight and nine as addendum. Addenda. I only see one one addendum. Look at the next. Look at the. Well, there's two. Uh, uh, there's two things in the addendum. Oh, I I thought they were separate. Okay, so they are. What our listeners don't know is that uh, they're separate. That's whenever whenever you. S- Send me something for the show. It is always just like you said, a, a mystery wrapped in a conundrum or uh, a riddle wrapped. What did you say? A riddle wrapped in a conundrum. It's I think. A, it's a riddle wrapped in a conundrum. So that that line we're currently talking about, you said. Also, when I disagree with DJ Roomba and all caps, the Alley video cam. Somehow, I think I thought that the DJ Roomba was connected to the Alley video cam. Like maybe you'd if this then that. And when when homeless people squat in your alley, DJ, DJ Roomba goes oh, out and uh, be sends them on their way or something. Oh, that'd be cool. Jeez, no, but maybe that's for a thought for the a future. Riddle wrapped See, in a to me, that is how you put together show notes. Uh, assuming that either we can talk about them briefly beforehand or. Um, that would be what it, what a host or an interviewer would get be given. Hey, she's got a story about DJ Roomba. How's your DJ Roomba? That would no, be no. It's, it's not. It's not, I got the I got the DJ Roomba part. It's the uh, I know. I understand. And I just said, okay for for an English teacher who who probably spent so much of her time uh, yelling at people over fragments and and yeah. unclear thoughts. You give me so many unclear thoughts that I just have to muddle through to figure out what what we're talking about. You don't have to fi- you don't have to muddle through any of them. They're literally <laughs> sitting here as like placeholders for things sitting that we there, might not talk hurting about. Anybody, right? Not threatening. Not, not not trying to do anything. <laughs> we talk about how, as an English teacher, we talk about how language is a tool and it's supposed to be doing something. These are only they're they're, I think func- that's the, they're not the, functioning like the theme of our show sentences. today is what? how how language is a tool. Okay. I think that's it. What? All right. Starting with number one, going down the list. With my follow-up? With your follow-up. Hold on. I want to unpack the whole problem with the, the and, the bolded and. Okay. First of all, I stand by it because it's a conjunction. So those are two things. I was putting that note in there. I was trying to go to bed. Look, it's 927 at night. Mm-hmm. Last night I tried to go to bed then. I didn't. But that's when I was, he- I thought I was heading to bed. So I was being real quick about it. And when I disagree with DJ Room, but all I, I had a note sitting around on a sticky note all week for myself. So I was just putting it here where you would also see it uh-huh. about how funny it is. I think how funny I think it is that throughout the week when I've been 
puttering around the house and DJ Roomba sends me, or I'm out here in the studio and DJ Roomba sends me a message that says, um, DJ Roomba successfully completed a job. And I go into the room and I go, well, you know what? Not to I my disagree. Satisfaction. Exactly. And so it continues to be like my pet or my kid and my only companion in my home on a regular basis. And then it's like, well, yeah, it disappoints me just like everybody else does sometimes. It's like the kid, it's like, mom, I cleaned my room. I go in, okay, DJ Roomba, do you call this room clean? Because there is a little <laughs> scrap of paper right there in the middle of the living room. It's the whole point I brought you in here today. It is very and it funny. Do. So I think that's funny. That's all. This week, uh, well, Delaney disagreed with our thing. DJ Roomba. Mm. Uh, it said it cleaned the bathroom, and she did not agree. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And she was right. There was uh, there was kitty litter. It could have come along after DJ Roomba went through, but I don't think so. I think the the Roomba just missed it yeah. on its random path. Uh, and then there's one thing in the app that bugs me that where I disagree with DJ Roomba. Mm-hmm. And after the job finishes, it gives you the status, and like we'll call it three quarters of the time. It runs for the whole length, and then it goes and it finds its base station, and it says, job completed successfully, mm-hmm. like you said. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes, maybe one in eight, it runs the whole length of the cycle, and then it goes back and it finds its its base, and it says, job canceled. Huh. It's like, I didn't cancel it. Delaney didn't cancel it. The cat didn't cancel it. What uh what what in its software says that this job was completed and this job wasn't, even though they both ran for the same length of time and it found wow. its space both times? So I don't know what's going on in, in Ferdinand's brain. That's my DJ Roomba, Ferdinand. I know. Uh, but, yeah, it's like he's just going, uh, I'm done today. <laughs> I'm out. But it's theoretically, I mean, the, the results are the same. It's cleaned the same, right. amount, of, same amount of space mm-hmm. and same time. And today it didn't say, it didn't say, maybe it's trying to tell me it had a bad day. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe it today, went to work. job successful, the next time, eh, <laughs> it wasn't so great today. But I mean, you know, so we're just going to cancel it. We're just going to go home. We're going to try again next time. What I don't have right there is I don't, well, first of all, you spend a hell of a lot more time looking at results in that app than I do. But I, my, my, I know you are. My, I'm fascinated by so much of it, but my robot does not find its base station. I have to manually put it there every time. No, your your base station, by virtue of your house being the shape it is, uh, it's not visible from right a lot of places in the house. And my my On apartment's one room, purpose. so yeah, it, uh, my my room, but almost always finds its base. station. But I station. mean, mine doesn't find it. Like Andrew, it's a problem. I should probably I don't know reset or look it up. I should probably look it up. Uh, it doesn't if it's within a foot of it, and I tell it to dock, it doesn't find it. Really? When it's sitting on it, it can be, you know, it feels like it should magnetically, like, find its way there and start charging automatically, right? Mm-hmm. Mine will be sitting on there and I think it's charging and then I go to start it and it has it's not been charging for two days. Hmm. Yeah. It's That's dumb. confusing. It's real confusing to me. I think it is about where I have the base. It is, it's, I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me, but it, it's, the, it's the least of my room of problems because I can go, and I almost always do, I go physically set it there, but it's not my, I mean, I shouldn't that's have not, to. Right, that's not, that, that's not the goal of your robot. No, vacuum. it's not. Maybe you can look at that sometime. Maybe, um, I don't know what I would do. I don't even know how to begin to troubleshoot the room but not finding its base. Other well, than, I mean, maybe you could just look at it and maybe I'm doing something. Maybe it's the way I have the base set up. Perhaps. Is your base very stationary? Mm-hmm. Like it can't move? Well, it's it's pushed up against the wall, but just the wall. Mm-hmm. That's fine. And we we actually do minus two, but it can like little, not get away. Um, molding our baseboards. There's a small gap. I uh-huh. talked about it uh-huh. on the podcast. The right. brushes get underneath the yeah. small gap in the baseboards. Yeah. Uh, the bottom of the base is kind of wedge shaped, so it wedges into that gap, and it uh-huh. it doesn't really. So move. It, that's the thing. I think mine might be moving a little bit. By the way, that is really. Now, I have been doing a lot of caulking lately. Important to pronounce the L mm-hmm. in that it's word. It's very important. My nephew and ex-husband taught that to our boys. You've got to say caulk. I've been doing a lot of caulking. I've noticed a lot of um, baseboards loose and uh, window trim loose. I've been doing a lot of caulking and liquid nails around here. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's good that you have a gap between your baseboard and your floor. It's just uh, poor craftsmanship. I, I don't think. Uh, just I don't learn, think I just our, realized, I'm aware of it's that. It's causing us insulation issues. No, no. I just mean it's janky. It is. I'm janky. just looking at shit like that now, Andrew. That I own a house and going, hmm, like a seam like that can really bump me. 
oh, yeah. for a long time. A piece of dirty caulking, you know, not, like like off colored caulking mm-hmm. in the bathroom. I can sit and look at that, and it'll keep me awake at night. I'm, I've been on. <laughs> I a, know that feeling. Mm-hmm, I've been and on that's one of those one of those things that it sits and festers in your brain mm-hmm. uh, for months, maybe even years, until eventually you're at the the Home Depot or your or whatever, and you're like, wait a minute, caulk, caulk. I always say caulk. Uh, caulk. Don't do that. Uh, I could use some of that in the bathroom. So that thing, that thing right. may go untreated indefinitely. I don't know. But I, I got I've three definitely tubes of caulk, and I've had a handyman coming around. So that's it. And then I just kind of got, I've gone gung ho on making sure everything's patched up. And 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 I mean, I'm not there yet, but I've been just really concentrating bit by bit on baseboards and things. Plus, I've got a handyman around the house, so it's very important to say caulking. Mm-hmm. You know, you really of can't course. send the wrong message, especially on this podcast. We wouldn't mm-hmm. want to send a unfamily friendly sort of message out into the world. Right. Okay. So that was my only see, so I feel like putting in there when I disagree with DJ Roomba is the exact right note to put in. And then if that's something we want to pick up and talk about on our little show, that's it's, it. It's the two things on the same line that gets me. I apologize me. for let's, that. Let's Andrew. Move on I really do. To and the, I did some the of alley that. cam. Tell All me right. about your alley cam. Okay, so we know about the alley cam, <laughs> and I think I talked about it, and I think I even told you, maybe on this show, maybe not, the day after my dad's funeral. I was in my mother's living room, and my alley cam tripped. We all know about it. It's a cam in the in the. And you told the person to alley, move along, and they uh, tri- did. To move along, they did. Great. So the other day, I was inside my house, and I got a notice that the um, motion detected in my alley. So then it starts recording, right? Mm-hmm. And as an event that I can find, so I have it, and I can play it for you. And it is so funny. It is a guy standing there just tweaking and it was a beautiful beautiful day it was in the middle That's of the afternoon beautiful, beautiful tweak uh-huh beautiful <laughs> tweak he well it was he was doing a monologue he was as though he was performing for the alley and there's no one out there like for for a fence and a garbage can he was performing <laughs> i mean he was having a full on discussion about cardi b and the three amigos and he was like and i'm not talking that bullshit three amigos i'm talking cardi b and i i don't know the whole i mean obviously it was nonsense but i'm like kind of watching it and just watching it through my camera inside the safety of my house then the camera sensor goes beep 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 and flashes a red light and this guy turns and looks straight at it which is perfect of course because then you've got the face if you, you need it mugshot. for any violence but he looks at it and goes i'll remember that <laughs> <laughs> and like points at it. I mean, so like out of a movie. Like, I remember that. I remember that. And then he walks off mimicking it, going beep, 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 beep. I heard that. Oh, rem- <laughs> <laughs> That's it pretty was funny. So funny. <laughs> like, just in terms of performance art in my alley. I was a little freaked out, like well, you because love he was performance. saying, "I sure do," and he was saying, that's, that's "I'll remember that." Literally, right up that. your alley. It, mm, <laughs> ring the bell. You still have a bell? Okay, good. There we go. Performing right up my alley. Okay, that's all that we need to say about that. Really, <laughs> I was worried he was going to come back because he was saying, "I'll remember that," and I was like, "Oh no, he's going to, you know, pinpoint me as the bad house." I'm like, he's literally tweaking on drugs. He's not going to. He is not going to remember any of this. Well, I'm, I'm also interested to know what he would remember. Would he? Would he harbor animosity towards uh, the camera? Or the faceless, the faceless operator on the other end of the. I camera. didn't make any noise. Right. That's what, but that's right. what I'm no, saying. No, exactly is, right. Right, is, right. Is, no, is he angry at a person much, or a machine? Well, at that moment, it felt like a machine. But who knows? <laughs> I know. Okay, that's it. It was just like that. We've been talking about that alley so much and how to keep him away. Uh, the system I have that really does funny. work well. You should put well. that on YouTube. I might. I mean, it is funny. Put that the, on it, your uh, your voiceover it reel. It stops recording pretty quickly after he says, I'll remember that. You still get it. But I mean, he went on and on, but then he wasn't in the sight line of the camera anymore because it worked. He walked away. But from... From the next garage over, I could hear him still just screaming about about whatever had just assaulted and offended him. Yeah, that he's going to remember. Oh, it was so funny. Okay, so that's it. That's all. That's those. Those. That's those two. Good. We're moving right along. Mm-hmm. So now I want to take. And these are just suggestions. We can talk about whatever you want. What's new in your life, Mister Bridges? I'm trying to think. What's new in my life? More wedding stuff. Uh. We're still working on right now. The big, the big thing is cake tastings and oh, bridesmaids and suits and dresses and cake all, all kinds of that stuff. 
What? Is it fun? I just cake taste it. It just well, we seems tried to go cake dumb. tasting, and there's a uh, there's kind of a famous cake maker in Colorado. They're way up in Arvada. Oh yeah, it's right right near my parents' house. You should stop by and see Marshalline if you go there. Should have done it real close. Um, but they've been out on vacation since yes, Christmas. I know. They, they take close. a they take a two two month holiday. Was oh, it two month? It used to just be one month. Well, I guess it's early February. It's it's from Christmas to now. So yeah, it's, it's I know a month this. I happen to know that because my mom couldn't get her bread for that month, so she bought extra in advance. It seems like a very nice place. My parents actually bought their wedding cake years oh, ago. This is this is sure. like the the place to go yes, in Colorado yeah. if you're going to have yep, a cake. Yep, it was at the time. Yep. And um, so you haven't been able to taste it. Haven't been able. We went, we went all the way out to place. Farvada last week, and we couldn't make it. So we're going to try oh. again this week. You didn't call ahead. Uh, you, we looked on their website and they're oh. like, we do, we do every weekend we do drop in cake tasting. Yeah. From 10 to two or something. I believe in fact that we did it. Yeah. For my wedding. We did not get married here. We eloped, but I believe we did go there and do the cake, cake mm-hmm. tasting. It, it because for like a brief must do. time we thought about, it. yeah, but that's funny to me right now. It just feels like, oh my God, but that's hideous of me. And, and you know what? Probably more of our listeners are pro wedding planning. My cousin Nikki, who called during the middle of the show last week or texted me she's in the middle of wedding planning congratulations nikki i feel oh, ya she also pointed out um and she you and delaney are mostly on the same page okay i nobody will care nikki won't care if i say this um but she just pointed out how she becomes a bridezilla like she is so calm and their relationship is so perfect most of the time and then when it comes to like things about fonts <laughs> she feels herself just losing it and she knows it and it's very funny to hear this kind of meta <laughs> version of like no I know these are things that kind of don't matter in the long run of life but oh my god I watch myself spin into how much they do matter mm-hmm. are you having some of that a little bit uh-huh. I think that my tendency in all things life is to to look at the the forest the big picture yes and because of that so uh, most of the time details don't interest me in fact sometimes details frustrate me uh-huh. Uh, and when when there's a decision to be made about something that I perceive to be a detail, uh, generally my answer is is noncommittal, but also non like I really don't care to make it happen. It's, it's not gonna to me. It's not gonna have a, a big enough effect on the day for me to have a preference this way or this way. Right. Um, and there's so many details that have to happen, and I'm I got some some <laughs> some really great advice from from a friend. He says, the best way to do this is to figure out what she wants you to say before you say it and say oh, that. Funny. Oh, funny. Oh, funny. <laughs> oh, funny. <laughs> and it's weird how many details because really you're just planning a party. Do you know what I mean? Well, People it's, plan it's, parties all the time. It's very funny that you mentioned that because I think about like when I was at the fraternity and we'd plan parties. Correct. And you go get a... Um, <laughs> You go, you go borrow the five gallon water jug that you used in Little right, League right. and you fill it full of uh, vodka <laughs> vodka and lemonade powder and beer. Uh, and then that's, that's your party. That's your party. You just, you okay. just need five gallons of liquor. And then you, you, we could actually, we could have oh, a party sake. with, uh, okay. you know, 200 people. I know you could. Okay. <laughs> I understand. That's right. That's not that kind of party planning, but I mean, it's just funny. I mean, the truth is right. It's and definitely I've been doing, a skill. And, and, well, and I've been doing a lot of pitching for corporate events and speaking gigs and announcing gigs and like now I'm on gig salad where people can hire me to be an MC for their whatever mm-hmm. um gig so I've been looking at a lot I mean of course that's right there are, there are well for one thing if I go and search uh, um event plan event management companies you know like the mm-hmm. r- road races that I announce that's what I'm looking if I go and search those I end up with half of my uh, search results are wedding planners. Oh, I'm sure. So, I mean, that's it. It's I guess it is a big party, and it's I just say in like a big corporate party, there are yeah, there are professionals who do that mm-hmm. all the time. I guess the weird part about a wedding is that it's two young people planning a corporate style event for the first time in their lives, and that's weird, right? Because they're yeah. Anyway, it doesn't. I, I will say that um, I was once details. once we started seeing the details, I was totally overwhelmed. And Delaney stepped right up. She has a real aptitude for this this yeah. sort of thing. And I don't know if she's planned large events in the past. I don't think she has. Um, but she is she is right there uh, making all those decisions, making it happen. I think we're going to have an amazing wedding, and it's mostly going to be her fault. Of course. Well, and that's the <laughs> thing. Those are the skills that are also going to make her a good wife forever and a good mom because she's going to be – like those are those are the kind of like – um, organizational project management skills that are the hallmark of good room mothers. 
I mean, I was that person. That's you. Know, that's what I'm saying. Like you, eventually, Delaney's going to plan a million more parties in her life. Mm-hmm. This is probably for, just for the as very many beginning. people. That's exactly right. Yeah. I mean, that's the truth. Is that that's partly what seems funny about it from my perspective. When you're going, God, there's so many details. It's like, well, there's so many details every time Kim Dryling throws a birthday party for Frank. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. and and has a luau and a pig roast in the backyard. I mean, so many details, including flowers and decorations, and photographer and everything else. Um, you know, or a, or your um. Your kid's elementary school throws a silent auction. Delaney's going to be right at the forefront of that because she's good at planning your wedding. It, it is kind of funny. I don't think there are people our age who do this for sport, but that is absolutely something that comes out in the next 10 years when we have kids. Yep. There are definitely uh, it, people who throw parties, fancy parties for sport. For sport. For mm-hmm. sport. I think there are kids your age who do it, which is weird because I see them on Instagram. I'm not quite sure what that's about, but I think they mm. seem to be trying to monetize it. <laughs> anyway, well, okay, wedding plannings. Do you have any um, little details you want to share with us? Like, what kind of flowers or colors? Do you want to share colors? I don't because uh, I, I think we've we've decided on the colors, but everything is um, everything is negotiable and debatable and Got can it. change on a in a second. Great. Uh, so I don't want to I don't want to commit to anything. If I'm invited, I'll see it on the day. If you're invited, it's you got to behave yourself. Still up Phil in Hall. the air, which is some bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. Really, God. Speaking, yeah, okay. speaking of all, all the ways in which I mean to you, let's let's start with number one on your follow up yeah, list. That really, I was that really bumped you. That's that's the third time you've you've mentioned this to me about. Um, I thought we agreed to pitch products. You, you you've said yeah. that to me so many times, yeah. and I'm, I'm not not pitching products. In fact, all I was doing was writing a cold <laughs> open, Mrs. Phil Holm. I know, but and I said the, the, the punchline of the cold open. open wasn't that you're expensive. The punchline of the cold open was hold on, I got to pull it up. Is that I was a, a great. Is that and you're, that was you're an evangelist two. and a, uh, faithful who's friend. a faithful friend. That was number two. But you anchor on the, why am I expensive? No, I don't anchor. I literally sat there for our entire show. When you finished last week, I came back. I came to after your opening. No, I, I clicked off my mute button and I went, huh. Do you mind if I reread this for for? Uh, oh, you probably should reference. for for people who are just tuning in to the big show. That's right. And I, I also have to remind myself because I can't remember anything. Mm-hmm. The first thing you should know about my friend Mrs. Philholm, this is last week's, is that she's an evangelist. Of course, Mrs. Philholm is Catholic, and all Catholics have a subconscious imperative to convert non-believers for a little extra credit with the big man. But that's not what I'm talking about. No matter who you are, Mrs. Philholm will talk your ear off about all of her favorite things, whether it's her Roomba, a new ergonomic chair, a bidet, or even her friend Andrew. All of these things are the best, and if you're not on the, if you're not on the train yet, you soon will be, or you're stupid. The next thing you should know is that this quality in Mrs. Philholm can make her an expensive friend to have as you learn about all of the new must-have gadgets, but it's worth it to have such a strong supporter in your corner. Once you've won her trust and made it onto her list of highly recommended things and people, you can do no wrong. See, I thought that was a sweet one last week, and you just you just anchored on your expensive. So sweet, and that's when I, I and we, and we, conferred at the beginning of our episode and throughout our episode last week, I went, that was a nice one, right? It was nice, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it know. ended up being good. It, 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 turned, it turned in a nice way, um, which, no, I understand that. And I love that part of it, that once you're in my team, that's right. Uh, I'm a faithful friend. That's lovely. But I just backed all week I thought about it and we didn't address it on the podcast. And then I just kept thinking about it. Expensive for it to have. Well, first of all, I am freaking out about money right now for the first time in my very own life. So not freaking out, just being like conscious to not whatever. I'm gonna. Sure. Ha, ha. I don't have steady income coming in. And, You're and on a very I, fixed income, I'm like a very Jerry's, fixed income. Jerry's Nana. Yes, that's right. And I'm writing $2 checks for people for their birthdays. But so I, I got a little like, wait, wait, I'm not expensive to have that. That made me feel anxious. But I continue to stand by the life improvement because I'm not destitute and I'm really, really fine. I'm just I don't have a steady source of income right now like I'm used to. I'm trying to make it as a freelancer. So. I stand by the life hacks that you and I agreed. In fact, the little show that we didn't re- release because it wasn't that good, but we did a whole show, a whole like 30 minutes of just talking about items in the 100 to $200 range that like improve our lives, mm-hmm. including your harmonica. Um, My Ann harmonica. Your Ann harmonica. Did you get your uh, caliper thing that you wanted? That nope, fancy I didn't. tool? You don't it's need it. It's still out there. It's still out there on your wish list. We talked about a wish list. So anyway, I just went, wait a minute. I thought we agreed to pitch products and then I heard it as wait, I'm an expensive friend to have and I did I don't want to be an expensive friend to have oh my goodness Mrs. Philholm I'm just trying to write I know, a that, cold all. open and I was just trying to respond to it like wait a minute what 
I thought that's what we do. So and all you're, of it, you're not expensive fun. in the no. way that uh, that a young man might talk about his girlfriend. She's so expensive. She no, expects me shit. to take her out to dinner. No. You're so expensive in the way. Look at this cool bidet I got to I shower know. my butt with warm water. I know. <laughs> you need one too. I know. I so know. it's it's really uh, I, I, it's, it's, it's a different insult. kind of in- oh, expensive. Oh, I understand. I just was. That's what that was my follow up. The follow up are notes that I was writing to myself. Throughout the week, listen, I'm also in writing mode mm-hmm. a lot in my life and putting things on different colored like when, sticky notes. When Ricky Bobby's in autograph mode, you don't want to get near him because he might sign your forehead. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> actually. Uh huh. So it's, that's right. So we have more organized <laughs> notes throughout the week because I'm back in note mode and I just put them here so that you could see them and share them in my head. And we're sharing them. We're going through the okay, list. Okay. We're going through the list. Today we're doing notes. All yep. right. Okay. So when I saw your expensive comment, I thought that, well, they're, they're, this whole list, so we're on one of seven, and you say on, on the stage you should never uh, tell people how many right. how many things there are because right. then they're always waiting for the next one. But you'll know when you get to the next one. Uh, it seems like a lot of these things are very existential. It's about oh, okay. how, how you see yourself, how you think mm. people see you, how you want yeah. to be seen. It's a very... You know, one of one of them is literally about uh, integrating all aspects of LLF into one brand. How is it going? That's a follow up from our previous show. That's a follow up from our no, year I know, but of it's, discussing it's, it's, that. It's a very like it's a it's an existential thing. Yeah, and I, 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 I well, suppose it's been part of the show, show this yeah. whole time. Yeah, partly because show about life because you've been making big life changes. You know, yes, this is this is the it, it was the year of big life changes. Now we're a year removed, but it's still. I mean, it's yeah. it's an ongoing process. Correct. So these feel to me very. very very germane. Very, yeah, totally, totally germane, relevant, but also kind of having an existential, like, what am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to do? Kind of, yeah. Uh, Who am I? What yeah. is your 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 cold open this week? Ends with that deep thought about how what is it? We're all multifaceted people. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, so okay, so this brings us to number two, where you say, "Here's the note, word for word." <laughs> well, don't. See, I don't expect my notes word for word will be shit. People don't trust that I, I am like who I am. Oh. Open quote evangelist slash faithful friend close. No, oh, I said quote. That's not a quote. It's a parens. Anyways, people don't trust that you're an evangelist and faithful friend. Uh, and then you say, Lane fam, it's a thing. Yeah. I what, learned that during my people, father's. People don't trust my wisdom. <laughs> right. They don't no, believe your me. wisdom, they don't believe you necessarily. It's not that they don't believe you. No one is listening to you. It's not about <laughs> you. Um, no, you know, you're... hurtful, Mrs. Phil. I'm just saying our show. It's, we're a little, no one's listening to us. Nobody cares. Nobody is listening it's to our show. It's not about you, Unfortunately. Andrew. I know. Dear sweet really listener, could. please tell 10 Tell friends. your friends. Tell your 10 friends. And buy the Roomba with the link. And make them And buy the toilet friends. seat with the link. I, I mean, okay, that's, we'll go. I mean, there, we don't need to follow in the bidet, but it's great. And you should use our link to buy it. Um... Right. Your cold open last week, which you just uh, revisited for us about how like that, that I'm a very faithful friend. And if you're in sort of if you're under my wing, I will be mama bear about you. Right. I will protect you. I will consider you part of my tribe. I'm not unreasonable. I mean, if friends of mine do bad things, I mean, I'm not blind faithful, but I feel like I'm very, um, yeah, all in and, and to a lot of things. And I during the hangout, during the hang, during my dad's funeral, we had a lot of hang time. <laughs> that is a thing that other people, other members of my family have learned. I especially talked about this with the men in the family, but I'm sure it's true of some of the women as well, where like they go, oh, no, no, like my wife, it took her a long time to believe I'm as good as I am. I mean, no, like that. Yeah, I will keep coming back around and be as faithful and loving and uh, true blue and um yeah, no, it takes people a long time. And I have been realizing that in the comedy scene and just in general. I mean, all my life I've known that, like, people, it takes them a while to believe it. Like, that I know I'm really be to there trust. for you. Uh-huh. Slow to trust. And I'm a lot. I think I do freak you think, people do you out. Think, I think I seem insane when you meet me. Like, she can't really be that, say, friendly, for example, okay? We'll mm-hmm. just call it that quality. She can't really be that friendly. She can't keep it up. That's fake. And it's not. Right. I mean, I'm not always friendly, but when I'm being friendly, I'm all I mean, I'm pretty genuine. I am pretty much who I am. I would say time that in, the, in this podcast, you've been you've been straight up with everyone so much to the uh, including to fault. including bringing us into your, your toilet routine. Right. Right. You, you, there, there are very few things that are off limits or that are. Uh, 
I, you don't seem to you don't seem to have any issue telling it the way it is. Right. Somebody recently said like, "Is that a nat- new tattoo?" And then somebody else said, "Oh, thanks for asking the question." I was like, "You can ask me anything. It's a pretty known thing." Anyway, but th- no, I just had not put it into the context. I- I've known it about myself a long time that a, t- a lot of times people will meet me and they'll think she's crazy mm-hmm. or she's loud or she's whatever. And they think I'm, maybe they think I'm showing off. Maybe they think I'm performing. Like, whoa, that chick is a lot. The ones who love me learn very quickly. Like, yeah, she's totally a lot, but that's completely genuine. She's not putting that on. And she's not always like that's. I mean, she's always a lot, but she's not always happy, happy, happy. But if I'm in a sad alone mood, I'm usually not inflicting it on other people, usually. <laughs> um, you know, so... But it was just interesting to hear from, like, my uncles and my cousins going, oh, yeah, no, that's a thing that people just don't believe, especially if people who have trust issues or who didn't grow up with Lane family or, or whatever, you know, if they just, they just don't believe it. And, I mean, listen, through Divorce, the Rebuilders class, we also looked at a book called Attached, and they talk about – it talks about um, anxious, attached people versus uh, avoidant. And just if I tend to be more anxious and other people, it's just like that, that, and that those two don't mesh very well. And that an avoidant person who gets someone like me, who is so all in, who says like right in the middle of a first date, you're so fun. I can't wait to see you again. That freaks people out. That freaks some people out. And I don't get it because to me, it's just like almost I understand childish, childlike going what do you mean? I like you. Let's be all in in this or whatever. Or, or yeah, no, let's make a podcast. I'm right. not fucking around. I will make the podcast. Let's do it. Right. And people don't, I think, or if I say, no, I've got these eight different, I, I used to say when I was freelancing before, I don't tell people all of the things I'm trying to do to make money. I really, <laughs> there are very few people who I tell you are one of the only few people who knew because it sounds insane. And I think people don't believe me. You can't be all of those things. And then I'm like, well, but I'm, I'm doing all those things. So it's, it was just interesting to learn that there is a bit of a familial trait there, perhaps. It is interesting. And you said something that I connected with in particular. You talked about uh, dating and I like you so much. Let's do this again. Uh, and I think that made me a particularly unskilled dater when I was when I was dating in college uh, because I was not good at playing the game. Or, I think you're right. I remember this exact phase or, of your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was confused by it. Because you were like, what do you mean? I'm all in. I'm here. I like you. Hi. And people would go, oh, that seems suspicious. <laughs> or that seems too much. Right? Right. I know. Yes. So it's that. It's like, oh, here I am. I, I all Nope. Everything's out on the table. And it is interesting that, A, it freaks people out. Because to me, it's how I get through the world and it's what I think I appreciate. And B, that and there's I, some family history to it. Well, me, once people get past being blood. Freaked out. I think they learn to appreciate it, and that's something that I certainly appreciate in other people. Is when they're they're straight up and they they show me the the hand or the the thing they're trying to do exactly, or tell me their motivations exactly. That, that's something that I try to include, and I've noticed when I talk. I I even do this when I'm when I'm just having a conversation with another person. I start a lot of sentences with a deep dependent clause, trying to say uh, I give you the in order to before I give you the. Uh, the uh, what, I, uh-huh, what I'm uh-huh. actually trying to say. Uh-huh. Um, and wait, can you give us an example? Yeah, so uh, I would say that I wrote my cold open today I was just in, in in order to uh, address your your feedback. I wrote my cold open. Uh, trying to head it off at the pass, like uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Um, I don't want to be on the the defensive on this. I want to I want to talk about uh, the me being mean to you, sort of thing. Oh, right, 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 right. And also, what I was also thinking is that when you called me this morning, you said I have just writ- finished writing my cold open. Mm-hmm. Are we cool to schedule today? I mean, so, right. I mean, it's just completely transparent. Here, here's what your call is about. Right. Right. Right, and, and I appreciate that so much. And I also appreciate someone who, when I say, ooh, I got to go, someone's at my door. They go, okay, bye. <laughs> Not, okay, it's been great talking to you. There is a funny thing that some people do on the phone. They kind of wrap up the conversation. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I just called to uh, tell you about my kid's choir concert. And you go, yeah, I know we just had the conversation. I, I sometimes get, <laughs> and sometimes like that to me, which is, right, I don't want someone, I want to see your hand. 
Mm-hmm. It all comes back to how much I hate magic, really, Andrew. Um, I want to see your hand. Sometimes I think that comes off in my case as a, as abrupt and as um, well. well I, I just, guess I just want to be wet. able to approach this, especially when we're dealing in in text the way the way we are. You know, our, our show notes, like you said, it's, it's yeah. a, a line you you jot off before you go to bed. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of different ways to read things and take things. So I think I tend to, um, try to counteract that by providing the reference for where I'm coming from. Absolutely. You know? Yes. And that is the only way to be in, especially in texts and emails with other human beings. I mean, in, in professional context and in relationship context. Absolutely right. I'm still just going to go back to, you understand, these notes that I write are almost <laughs> like you're seeing inside my brain. I have not taken the step <laughs> to say, Andrew, here's the context. And you understand that if I thought I needed to, I could and would. And oh, normally sure in real would. life, I would. This is different. All I'm, all I'm saying is... Uh, as similar as we are, <laughs> the inside of your brain is a terrifying place for me. <laughs> so is yours, weird <laughs> spreadsheet boy. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, that was the, all about that. Again, I do not expect we're going to or want to talk about each of these things. These are just thoughts. Oh, I'm I'm doing that it. That I seem germane, that I think are germane to the topic. And isn't that interesting that other people in the Lane family, and that sometimes is very good for me, whether it's family or whether it's other people like me, a lot of times in the world, I feel like a freak. A lot of times in the world, I am told so, I am different and weird and a lot. And to know sometimes that I have context just feels actually good to me. Okay, so that's what that's what you're saying here. You're not uh, you're not the you're not misunderstood by the Lane family. Mm-mm. You're misunderstood by everyone else in the same way that everyone else in the Lane family is. Yeah, I mean, and I, all, see, see, I'm I, mis- I misread that one. Oh, yeah, funny. Well, I, I thought I thought you were getting beef from your fam. I thought no. they were like, no, you're not a faithful friend, Lisa. No, well, you I, don't, I was, I'm going to explain it to you. I'm not, if I wanted to <laughs> explain the whole thing to you, I wouldn't put it in a bullet pointed note. I would write an essay about it or I would talk to you. I know, and I've, you got, on a I've got no reference for it. I don't, I don't understand oh, what we're, fuck's sake. I don't know whether to be concerned and worried because your family is telling you you're not a faithful friend or if I should be pleased for you because your family gets you. I thought you would be interested and yes, please for me, Andrew, to lay it fucking out for well, I, you. I was nervous. That, I was concerned well, don't get nervous. that all our sweet none lane of listeners these notes were being should, unkind. No, none of these <laughs> notes should ever make you nervous. No, my point is that truly every once in a while, whether it's with the Lane family or elsewhere, I've just said this, I'm now repeating myself, it is nice to me to go, oh, I'm not the only one in the world. A lot of times I feel like I'm a freak. And partly it's because people say to me all the time, you know, like, whatever. I get, a, I get a lot of that. Like, And I am out here in my studio lately recording at 2 in the morning because I'm submitting for audition jobs. And I found out that 2 in the morning is a very nice time in this neighborhood where it's actually real quiet with no airplanes and subwoofers. <laughs> so, you know, and people think that's crazy. And then I sometimes feel, am I crazy? It's just nice to know that sometimes your family or other people make you put you into context and go, oh, yeah, I have that crack brain too. Or, oh, yeah, people also doubt my sincerity. And Andrew, same with you. I mean, that does bring me back to your dating days in um, college, you're right. It's exactly that. And often, and you're, you show up, Andrew Bridges, and your language of love is acts of service. And, and I think that to some people that seems fishy, right? Like, why are you doing so many nice things for me? What do you want for me? There are people who respond that way. So you get that too. Mm-hmm. And sometimes. so I was just saying, yeah, sometimes. So I was just saying, oh, that's a cool thing to realize that I'm, I don't know, there's some context to me once in a while. It's nice to not feel completely alone in the world, Andrew. Of course it is. And I'm glad that you're feeling uh, not alone uh, well, because I got I the impression that you were alone. feeling alone. Well, I am feeling very alone, Uh-oh. but not See, because of my family. my worst family. fears have been confirmed. Well, that's just because Let's I'm undateable. Let's talk about mean girls. You're mm. undateable. <laughs> just because I'm undateable. Let's talk about it. Do you think it. our podcast makes us uh, more relatable and it, it, people who listen to it would be inclined to like us? Or do you think they would turn it off instantly and say, F these people, I do not like them? Well, both. Clearly. I mean, the people we love have gone, sorry, can't listen to your stupid podcast. (laughs) Some of the people who do do listen to it surprise the heck out of me. Like, I don't know what. But I do know that if you ever want to date me, there's a year's worth of my internal brain workings. And there's no reason. I mean, there's I'm, again, totally transparent. It is literally all out there on the table. But as we know, I once walked a potential date because he said listening now and then he blocked me for good. <laughs> so so far the podcast has not gotten me any dates. I don't care. I don't I want d- dates. I do I have a do. Um, a it's shout out. Uh, I you know how people often keep track of 
uh, you know, how far someone flew in to get to a conference and they say, hey, look, yes. right, this, this listener came the farthest or whatever. Yes. Well, we have a listener in uh, Minsk, Belarus, who reached out yeah. and congratulated me on, our, on my engagement. Oh, uh, that's awesome. And it was very sweet. And I didn't know that he was listening. Uh, and I'm I'm proud to have him as that's a listener. That's so cool. We had somebody else in similar earlier that you shouted out one time. We had different person. Um, I might have been the same person, but I can't I can't believe he stuck with it. Right, we're, I we're mean, on episode fifty two, and I think he's oh, still there. Oh, that's so lovely. I know he's still there because he texted me. And he and he's oh well, we're all happy you're engaged, Andrew. The whole Lane family's happy yeah, too. It was, it was very sweet. Mean girls, I uh, yeah, I didn't talk about it. Um. Uh, what, how much what, ugh, do we want to talk about? Is there anything else interesting on that list? Mm, I'm more interested in number four than number three. Yeah, that's fine with me too. Okay, it's the. Do you want to talk about feeling like a fraud? Yeah, and it has, to, and they're all tied in together. Also, my notes are particularly janky in Slack because it was not using, it was not following the uh, structure of. Uh, numbered list with sub sub bullets. Yes, sub bullets. Yeah, I understand. Okay, and I wanted to put it into Slack so you would see it because God knows where you'll see the things. Despite the many times I have tried to institute some kind of like, hey, just go and look here, and then we have some ideas about what to talk about. Um, so I put it in here, and that's part of the thing is that a lot of things mushed together are mushed together here. Okay. Um, yeah, waiting for the other shooter. Yeah, feeling like a fraud. Uh, it ties in with me, girls. I had a real hater come at me lately, and it seems to be directly tied to, quote, the level of or, or a new sort of step forward in, quote, success is it in a, the a comedy person you world. know well or is it kind of a, a comic. Uh, an acquaintance? A woman comic acquaintance. Mm -hmm. She quit a job and I got asked to replace her. And, uh, I mean, the job is hosting. It's not a job. It's not a lot of money. It's hosting the Friday night open mic at the place where you came and saw. Mm -hmm. She used to host it. I, co I uh, subbed for her once. Um, she was training me to do the trivia at the same bar. And she quit in a fit of pique. And... The owner asked me to take over, which she warned me he might. And she said, I don't think he's a good guy. He's a bad guy. He's bad to women. You know, watch your back if you want to go work for a jerk like that. And I said, okay, thanks for the heads up. I totally watched my back. I conferred with the guy. Um, he asked me if I would take over trivia. I said yes. He wasn't sure about the open mic, so we spent we took a couple weeks off. Um, I worked with him to create it for a lot of reasons. He said, I don't want... I want to support the comedy. I want to have the kind of bar where people come and do fun things every night. But this open mic situation, it's insane. Like, I can't ask my friends to come because you guys are out there doing your therapy. You know, you comics are weirdos. Mm -hmm. And I said, what if we book, what if we book 90 minutes and um, of comics and we can guarantee it's going to be at least people trying, you know, bring in their A game. I can never guarantee you're going to laugh at every comic, but I can guarantee these are people who are real comedians and they have material and they generally make people laugh at Comedy Works. And he said, yes. So that's what we've created now. And then we have an open mic after it. It is, it is wonderful. In the city of Denver, there was, it was a good night. There was a, there was a need for it. Uh, we have a full house of audience, which is the most important part to me. I mean, we have standing room only. Mm -hmm. And, um, and comics are reaching out to say, can I be on your show? Comics that I feel like, like I am still in the mode of like feeling like a fraud going, well, this is my dumb little thing. Nobody's going to want to do it. I have comedies who are pros, comics who are pros at Comedy Works coming out and saying, what do I have to do to get on your Friday night show? I'm like, you just have to ask. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh my God. Can I suck your dick? I mean, like I, Good like Lord, what do, Phil they're Come women, on. they're women. They're women comics. We're yeah, but that. you and I know that in this day and age, even a woman comic can have a dick. I know. Come on, Phil. So, but my point is, I just feel like very, very, very thankful and 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 grateful and overwhelmed that they'd even want to be on it. So I'm still coming from. The, I'm just trying to build this little thing, and it gives myself, gives me a showcase. It gives me a playground to work on my jokes with a real audience. And I think because it's suburban and free parking, um, the audience skews a little bit older than most of the places I go, and this is very important to me. It's is to practice my stuff with a middle-aged audience. So it's completely a vanity project, but I'm building this little show. And of course, what it's doing is highlighting a bunch of other comics and it's just great. And the woman who quit the job in my, I understood it as she quit something, she quit a job, I was given an opportunity and I've made something with it and I'm very proud of it. And she has come at me in a way that 
I mean, it's very adolescent. It all goes back to my book and you want saying, Mrs. Philholm, everybody's like a toddler. Everybody acts like a teenager. But I got hated. Um, the method of delivery was Facebook Messenger because that's how comics communicate in this town. And it was personal for a while. She publicly blasted me back in December, end of December, and I just untagged myself and that kind of disappeared. I mean... To the level of harassment. And also she said things about me, meaner things than I have ever heard said about me ever in my life. Like, and then it became. And you, you go to, uh, you go and participate in roasts for fun. Yeah, right. That's right. <laughs> so down to the number four and the three and four combined. The, that's the reason I'm giving you the context. Feeling like a fraud. It, it, it was that moment of like, I mean, I always feel like a fraud. I think most. Mm-hmm. We've talked us, about it for, before. I remember uh, the term imposter syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't most of us feel that way? I think it's pretty normal. I think so. Right. I, I think uh, that term is powerful, though. Once you sit with it long enough and you know that it exists, it takes some of the fraud feeling away, mm-hmm. you know? Sometimes. I don't know. The, the measure I was just thinking of while you were talking is these these comics are calling you and you're like, uh, why, why are you calling me? I'm just a little nobody. But they are, are they are calling you. There is there is outward signs of your success. Exactly. Uh, whether whether you're a fraud or not makes no difference. Exactly. Uh, you've still got the trappings of success. That's right. And I mean, we're talking. I understand, like incremental success in this dumb little particular field. But what it comes down to for me is. Um, that waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like every time I have a modicum of success or, or I'm going in a forward direction of where I think I want to go. I want to do these things. I want to do voiceover. I want, you know, speaking gigs. And I really feel lately like, no, 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 this might be happening. I'm getting some stuff. Okay. Ah. And the fear of, oh, uh, I mean, and that's deep and dark. Uh, don't get a big head, Lisa. And also the fact that there was this hater right there in the sideline, I mean, actually taking shots at me. And then last week she publicly blasted me. She went on blast again, publicly she said some stuff blast. about me. Mm-hmm. Publicly me said some things blast. with her mouth or with her Facebook. fingers typing. Yes. Which again, I regret that now, I regret that the number of conversations where it's like, well, this on this, she did this on Facebook. It's like, oh, for God, <laughs> I really don't like it. But that's the, that's the public market, right? That's the, that's our... As our currency, and that's how we're having this discourse. And um, six months ago, a year ago, I would have just quit. I would have said, yep, proves it, proves it. I'm doing something. I must be wrong. Uh, people hate me, so I got to stop. And and my first thought was not that. There's nothing been in me for the past month and a half where she's been doing this that has made me think, that's it, I'm out. I didn't do, I didn't have the first response that I hope I will have the next time, which is step the fuck off. You quit a job (laughs) and I took an opportunity. Sure. Why do you get to be the boss of me? Mm -hmm. End of story. I didn't do that at first. I was very freaked out and I was very sad. And I said to a friend of mine, I don't have the tools to get through this. I don't have the tools to deal with a hater coming at me that hard because I am too prone to feeling like a fraud because I am too prone to going, oh, yeah, yeah, any measure of success I get is wrong and undeserved and I should just go back and eat shit. Uh, I'm getting better at it. Um, And it's helpful that it's somebody that doesn't really matter to me Mm -hmm. and doesn't matter in the long run. But, I mean, Andrew, I saw it counsel from older, wiser comics and comedians and a a guy in the scene who is a very old professional. And we are lucky he's even around. And he explained to me, he didn't explain some things. He explained some things. He said to me a few things that were like kind of obvious, but you know, when you hear something right in the moment. Sometimes you need to hear it from someone else. And in a moment. mm -hmm. And one of them was, I think this is coming at a good time because you are getting success. And I went, am I? Okay. And he said, People are going to come at you. No, for real. Literally, as you get successful, especially in a public domain like performing, people are, there are going to be haters and it is because they are jealous. And I went, oh, come on. Because that's where it comes Mean Girls to me. Saying she's just doing that because she's jealous. That feels like something women say to each other and it feels diminutive. And I, I generally don't like it. Like she's just jealous. Mm-hmm. It feels it's like something. It's meaning. Well, and we feel like that's something. I feel like it's something we say to pump each other up. Do you know what I mean? Like right. if a guy ghosts my girlfriend, all of the girlfriends are gathered around going, he's an idiot. He doesn't. You know what I mean? And we're like, well, maybe it's us. Maybe we're the, maybe I'm not as great as I think I am. <laughs> right. Um, I don't know. But anyway, so for him, for this guy to say to me, I think it's coming a, a good timing for you because now you can get good at getting that actual thick skin. 
Mm -hmm. and learning how to handle it. And then he said, I am begging you to spend no more of your time or energy wondering why she's doing what she's doing. I'm wondering, so the the reason this is such a problem is because this is this is a small community, right? You've got a, a small town thing going on here and you can't just block her and be done with her in the same way you might be able to do with uh, someone on Twitter or whatever. That she, she, she keeps coming back. I can in a way. She keeps coming back. She doesn't ultimately matter. Yeah, it matters because she's blasting me to a community that I think matters to me in a small town way. It also just mattered from a personal point of view to have this person sp- just when it was at me personally for 12 hours. She kept coming back at me mm-hmm. with the worst vitriol. It just hurt my feelings is what it was. This guy that I got counsel from, the other thing, he listened to a bit of the story. And he goes, okay, I've got enough information. And he said, it feels to me like you are lowercase hurt Mm -hmm. and uppercase shocked. And I went, spot on. It's exactly right. Why the hell is she doing this to me? Like, really, why, 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 why all this meanness? When it got to the point of she was just telling lies to my face, I mean, like, like, objectively just saying things that weren't true, that's where I went, oh, yeah, okay, so this is just... Somebody's being mean to me. I don't I don't get that. I don't get why the need to be. I've never done that in my life. I've never raged at someone over and over and over with this need to make them feel bad. I've never done it. I've never done it to a stranger for sure. That's, yeah. that's like I, I, <laughs> I did it to my little sister. Girl. I've I've uh, I've yelled at my brothers and, and yeah. that sort of thing. But yeah. I, there, there is like yesterday I was on my walk. Yeah. And there was one person pulling out of their spot and they just, you know, they weren't paying attention and the a person driving by who's trying to get past them, they lay on their horn for three yeah. seconds, and then they roll down the window and yeah. yell at them as they flip the bird. Yeah. It's like, good Lord, how, that, do you, how do you have that kind of energy for that? That. Okay, and it goes and to it, my it, number it, seven. It delayed you, delayed you two and a half seconds on right. your drive. Exactly. That's what I don't <laughs> I don't get what you're getting. So again, uh, I was shocked. And, and Andrew, it bumped me off course. I mean, I it was overnight. It was December 28th when it first happened. I mean, I was back here working on my dad's urns and being just hate. And she kept calling me and calling me to the point of harassment. I wasn't picking up. I was freaked out. I was freaked out. Um, and I thought she might be like spreading my hatred about me throughout the whole scene. And at that point, I didn't know how people would take it. Here's the thing. Thanks to a friend um, who literally via text just kept me. I In my mind, he kept vigil with me that night. He's a cop and he's a comic and he's a badass. And he was just like, girl don't respond. Um, And then when I said, oh my God, now she's publicly, she just tagged me on Facebook publicly. And he goes, let her, let her spin out. I mean, she's a crazy person. She did come back and apologize to me for drunk raging at me. And then she did it again. (laughs) So that she's crazy. The truth is, here's the power that I have learned um, in all of this, which I guess it's easier for her to rage at you than it is to to look at her own, you know, whatever caused her to lose that I job. I guess, or go write jokes and be funnier. I mean, I don't, ah, I don't get the amount of time she's been doing that. Write jokes. If you're a joke writer, go write jokes. God, whatever. Um, but at that time, thanks to a friend coaching me through it, and then especially when it happened again last week, I, like, turned off Facebook. Mm-hmm. I think that's a, a, a decent, it's it's not the total solution, but I think that's, that's uh, you can stop the bleeding if In you can't hear case, the noise. In this case, it was even better. It was the total solution. That's right. If you can't hear the, that's an interesting matter, but you can stop the bleeding if you can't hear the noise. Like, good album title, um, but weird. <laughs> you can stop the bleeding sure if, if you true. can't. I don't know. I, I know it was good, but it's it seemed funny, to make sense. Can't in the, hear the, in the it moment. does make sense. I'm saying it's a good song title, that's, that's at least kind of for an indie note band. You would put in our our uh, yes. follow up okay. section. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, I did, the power of turning off Facebook and absolutely refusing to respond to her or to anyone else or to even see what she was doing about it. I it was easier than it ever has been in my life. Part of it is because, like, I have recognize that feeling of feeling like a fraud and knowing how often it stops me and makes me not keep going forward and then how easy it is to blame something else or someone else on me not getting what I've wanted in my life in terms of these things I want to do. I blame my husband. I blame myself. I blame my kids. I blame, you know, and I went, okay, well, I could easily blame a hater. I could say, that's it. I'm shutting it down. Okay, see, see, I'm not a comic. I don't know what I'm doing. And instead I shut it off and it took care of itself. People came out of the woodwork and shut her down. So the community actually defended me. I don't know to what level because I did not see it, um, but people told me about it enough. And then I reached out the next day to a 
couple of guys who I don't even know that they know me personally. I have, I assume I'm forgettable. I assume no one knows me, especially like more successful comics and stuff. But I just said, I, th- I understand I owe you an apology for shutting that shit down. They just went, yeah, that, that was just mean and spiteful and... um we don't truck with that. So it was very cool <laughs> that I just shut my mouth and did my breathing and sat in the lotus position. It wasn't fun. And then I want to tell you that Friday night show last week, and this is not the first time this has happened. There has been a little controversy around that stupid little show I do, which makes me bummed out because it should just feel like the most fun, light moment of my week. Well, it's a, it's a lot of people all all together. And, you know, when people get together... Yeah. Uh, there's friction. Yep. There's always friction. But I'm pretty good at managing it, you know? But, but even in a, if, if there's a group of 50 people, yeah. there's always going to yep. be someone who's angry. Yep. And maybe maybe your maybe your show started it, but more than likely it's because they got oh. other things. Oh, exactly And they're just that. bringing their, their baggage into your thing. 100%. And the greatest thing that this guy said to me, right, was... I am begging you to spend no more time or energy wondering why. Because that's the truth. You do that. And I've done that with so many people in my life. And that's like really like the first step of AA. It's everything. I mean, it's like just give up. Stop wondering why. Ours is not to wonder why. I mean, there's a defeatist way of looking at that. Ours is not to wonder why. Ours is just to do and die. That's how people get through bad bosses and bad jobs. But the other thing is I will never understand. Well, it's. It's a fool who looks for logic in the chambers of a human heart. I mean, I will never understand another person's brain. We are all complex and complicated people uh, making it through. Anyway, the, 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 what I learned about dealing with mean girls and also potentially about dealing with my own self-doubt, like, oh, you're getting, you're getting something. You're making progress here. There's no doubt about it. By, by the measures that matter to you, Lisa, you're making some progress don't get in your own way. And I think I find lots of reasons to get in my own way. Well, that hater brought me down. She can't, she can't touch me. I feel a little bit more teflon I feel, And it's good. <laughs> like, I feel a little bit like, and that friend of mine who got me through the vigil of Mean Girl Night, uh, I was really, I was like, I can't, I don't have the tools for this. He said, let it feel you. And he was like, listen, haters are going to come at you, especially when they're jealous. And I was like, come on now. And he said, let it fuel you. And I said, I have no idea how to do that. You got to teach me. You're going to have to listen to some Taylor Swift or something. There's a little bit of that. Well, here's what I have done. I think (laughs) you heard it. I've started telling jokes about it. I mean, and within three days, I took it to the mic. One of the things she said about me, and I turned it into a joke. I mean, because she said, Lisa, good luck. You'd You'd be starving if it weren't for your alimony money. And I have told a lot of jokes about that. And she also called me an untalented hack. Um, You know, but that's like an obvious insult um anyway so that's i mean i guess it fueled me because i wrote pretty good new material about it that's continues to be a chunk of material that's pretty good and not dirty andrew so um that's interesting i I, but but, uh, but it was not something i was good at handling and i didn't think i could do it and it it brought up all of that existential stuff including i'm just a fraud i'm just a fraud i've never said anything funny in my life Uh, what, what do i think i'm doing um and then just going, oh, I get it. There's somebody here trying to like, like as though from a, from a storybook, like it really is kind of that um, narrative. Like she's literally standing there like a golem saying the things I fear about myself. You know what I mean? In a way, yeah. like you're an untalented, funny hack. The only reason those people hang out with you is, da, 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 you know, this kind of thing. Um, but the other thing, it did tie into one and two or two because the other thing is like she because I think part of it is that people don't understand I am who I am I am that generous I am generous to all the other comics I do bring them peppermint bark when we have a show three days before Christmas she dragged the peppermint bark when she was yelling at me and I did tell some of my friends and they were like oh that's going a step too far but things like that like I am actually very <laughs> very nice peppermint bark, right. Mrs. Exactly. Home. she is Satan right Good but Lord. I mean I am that th- that was part of it wrapped into that is I think people think I have some other agenda that I am so expansively inclusive and love everybody around me not everybody but I love a lot whatever I will I will if you want to feel celebrated you should come to me you that's a we've known that a long time if you want to feel over celebrated come to me if you want someone to come to your kid's concert that sucks and still think your kid is wonderful call me right because I can find something positive to love about these people I'm known for that some people find that very suspicious 